talked about the resurrection of Jesus Christ and, and all the proofs, historical proofs that were there that Jesus was raised from the dead. The 500 that saw him that were still alive and they were referred to, uh, the, the different times that the apostles saw them, saw him, and he, you know, he walked 40 days on this earth after they crucified him and, and, and tried to kill him. But he just kept on walking, and, and, and we have no historical or biblical account of anybody messing with him afterwards. I mean, like, who wants to mess with somebody after you killed him, and now he's walking around alive? And Jesus is alive today. And that was what Resurrection Sunday was about. Jesus is alive. He's alive today. And when I first found out that Jesus was alive, I started telling everybody I could find Everyone I saw, I said, you know what? Jesus is alive. I bought stickers, put it on my helmet. I put it on, on my bumper in my car. I put it on my locker. Because I didn't know that Jesus is alive. I didn't know. And I hope you know. But we, 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 saw, we, we went through that message. And Pastor Martin gave this great, great message about how God uh, uh, breathed the breath of life into Adam. And he was alive. He, became, he gave him life through that pneuma, breath, spirit of God, a blast of life, and, and, and made his body alive. But then also, after the resurrection, the spirit of the Lord breathed life into man once Amen. again. Amen. And on the day of Pentecost, people were baptized in the Holy Spirit yes. and began to speak in, in to other tongues. And, and there were like, they say like, like tongues of fire all around on the people. Yes. But you know what? Uh, my Bible says that God is the same yesterday and today and forever. Amen. And He does not change. I said, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Amen. He does not change. That's right. That means how He was then, He is now. He hasn't changed. So all that happened. We talked about that. That was great. Then we got into this this idea of a cloud of witnesses, and we'll go to that scripture, it says uh, Hebrews 12, 1. We read this already two weeks ago when we were going through this. But as I asked the first uh, service, uh, I asked you to read the whole chapter and go through it. And I think we got two or three that did it, and the other ones did not, which goes along with my survey of Pastor Martin's <laughs> messages and mine that uh, we, well we don't read too much no. we'll let that one lay where it lays <laughs> uh, but when your pastor tells you to read something you need to read it Amen. there's a reason for it so uh, after that little exhortation we're going in it it says wherefore seeing we are also we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses Great a cloud of witnesses, it says, let us not lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Now, if you were to, we broke this down before, and just briefly, it talks about a cloud of witnesses. And we said that, as it, in the picture before, in the picture before, you could see people's faces in the in the sky. Well, that's not really actually biblical correct. There's no people's faces in the sky. But there are people that are in heaven. They were before us. There were the disciples. There were the there there were the uh, apostles. There were even the prophets before that. They were all waiting, waiting, waiting for the Messiah, for Jesus to come. And he came, and and there and that made them witnesses of what took place, witnesses to the prophecies being fulfilled. And then those witnesses got excited and and, and, and laid their lives down, laid their lives down on the line for what they believed, that they believed Jesus Christ is Lord, that He is Savior, that He is Messiah, that He is the Deliverer, that He is the Healer. That he, is, that he is the answer to our inside problems, insight. Amen. He's an inside God. 
He is the searcher of the hearts and intentions of man. Yes. That's what he does. So, so there, there's a cloud of witnesses. These witnesses that said, you know what? Jesus said it. He's going to do it. Jesus said he's going to walk with you. He walks with you. Yes. And, and, and now today, as I said in the morning, I'm saying that here again. There's a cloud of witnesses right here. You're all witnesses yes. to what Jesus has done in your life. Amen. You can talk about when maybe you were going to at the point of death and, and, and say, you know what, I was I should have died, but Jesus rescued me. You know, you can talk about the time you were all by yourself and enclosed and there was no, you know, you had no way out. And there, there was no way out. There was nothing that could happen other than a miracle. And Jesus showed up at the last minute. If you know what I'm talking about, say amen. 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 Yeah. Sure, so I, I, I had to say that because we got to give him the credit. That's you know? right. Amen. And he, sometimes he shows up at the last minute. So we are a cloud of witnesses. I, I, I testify that Jesus Christ is alive. He's alive. Yes. He lives. He lives. And so we went through all that. But I had said go through chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. And, and read there. And as you're going to verse 14. I'm going to tell you a little bit of history. Just a little bit of history. We're going to talk about holiness. That's where we dropped off. Holiness. Holiness. Holiness is a bad word in the it, within Christians these days to, to be holy. If you go and you tell your neighbor who doesn't go to church, uh, I, I am trying to be holy. I am striving to be holy. Uh, uh, and, and sometimes people will mock and make fun of Christians and say, oh, uh, you're trying to be a saint. Because they don't understand the biblical terms and words. A saint means someone who's set apart. Did you know that? Say amen if you knew it. Amen. Saint means someone who is set apart. Every believer in Jesus Christ is a saint. He's set apart to him. His name is written in heaven. His name is written in heaven. He's been delivered from the power of darkness and translated it into the kingdom of his dear son, Jesus Christ. Into his kingdom. That's the believer. He is sealed with the Holy Spirit. Sealed, that means sealed, that means uh, like a letter that the king would seal, and if someone touched it, the penalty was murder. Yeah, I mean, the penalty was death to that person who touched it. I don't know about you, but I'm sealed with the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 1. So all that taking place. But there was a time when people believed differently. There were a time when, there was a time when in, in the 1600s, in the Reformation of the church, when, when people were buying indulgences or working for indulgences, and indulgences means it was a certificate that bought your way to heaven, to redemption, that pulled your family members out of purgatory. It was a thing that was going on in Rome, and, 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 and people started talking about it and got flared up, and Martin Luther went and, Martin Luther went and nailed the 95 theses, which is 95 declarations against... Uh, the Catholic Church is what he did. Caused a big bunch of problems. It caused, and I'm mentioning that because it caused a movement. This is history. This isn't, this isn't defaming the Catholic Church. This is history. I'm telling you, history. So he moved from, from um, started a movement. A movement is a big mass of people. People that believe in something and, and, and they don't care what the government thinks. They don't care what anybody... He started a movement like that, that the Bible is a real truth. That was the movement. That the Bible is a real truth and the just shall live by faith. How many believe that? The just shall live by faith. The Bible says many times, the just shall live by faith. And a lot of people died for that, those little four words. That, that we are justified by our faith. Our righteousness comes by our faith. It's all in Romans chapter 3 and 4. It's all right there. So the, the, this concept, this idea, people start putting their, their lives on the line. They were in danger. And then along comes this guy that I, I hate to even say his name because people get all riled up. And along came John Calvin with, with his doctrine. And, and people started following him. 
to the point of there were 900,000 people in France, and they called them Huguenots. And the Huguenots grew to that number, and on one day, the French decided, that this, this is a, a thing that came against them, they decided they were going to kill a few of them, and they killed 35,000 of them in one day. They slaughtered 35,000 of them. They dispersed. 200,000 left France. They went. Uh, a majority went to Geneva, Switzerland, and and some went to Iceland, some went to England, and eventually they ended up at the holy ground of Florida. <laughs> and and uh, that's where, that's where the Huguenot that Huguenots landed in Florida, and they and uh, they began. Uh, building their churches and ministering there in Florida, in, in the United States. From there was birthed the Reformation, the Protestant Reformation. The Protestant Reformation had people like Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, people like that that wrote the Constitution, Bill of Rights, all this. This is where our history comes from. Yes. And I'm telling you all that it became from a movement, a, a movement of God that, that, that was... <coughs> was churning and transforming a lot of bad doctrine, a lot of bad ideas. John Calvin himself in Geneva uh, was worse than, than uh, treating people that in the Catholic Church. He was worse than them. He was a tyrant. He was a dictator. He had people killed and mutilated and tortured. It's all history. It's all history. So that movement switched into the Puritanical movement, the Puritans, the Quakers, that moved into a big strong movement of the Methodists that was in, um, I didn't write the date down, but it was in the 1800s, which converted the Methodists, and then that was a movement. And from there came the Holiness Movement. Mm -hmm. That's why I told you all that. Mm -hmm. The Holiness Movement, which went into the Salvation Army. Salvation Army was part of that. The, um, the um, Church of the Nazarene. And the John Wesley Methodist Church. John Wesley was a great preacher who moved through a revival. Maybe you read and heard about him. So all that took place. But then the idea of holiness came out of here. We're going to get spiritual in just a minute. Don't worry. So from there, uh, even the Pentecostal 1906 uh, movement in Azusa Street was affected by that holiness idea. If you, some of you have watched TBN. And, and you saw Jan Crouch there with her pink hair and all of that. And you saw people dressed real weird and real funny, whatever. Well, they were the children. Their fathers were in the holiness movement. And in that time period in the holiness movement, people couldn't wear jewelry. They, they couldn't use makeup. The women couldn't use makeup. They had to wear long dresses. They, they had to cover their hair. Many of them did cover their head. And a whole lot of restrictions, can't play cards, can't this, can't that, can't this. And, and they grew out of that, and when they went on television, they were trying to balance things out, and, and, and they kind of went overboard on it, and people would look at it and go, what is that? What are they doing? Mm -hmm. That's what they were trying to do. So the holiest, holiness movement has affected us even today. That's why I gave you the whole history of it. Because what the remnant of it is this. I don't want to be holy. I don't want to be a holy roller. I don't want to be someone that they look at and they say, Oh, mira que santito. Look at, he thinks he's a little saint. I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be too much Jesus, too radical, too this, too that. You know, I don't want people to think these things. So this idea, this mentality is running like a thread through the church. And people trying to resolve that problem here in Orange County, not... Like I said earlier, not in Florida, because it's holy over there, but over here in Orange County, where it's all full of sin and stuff, that, that somebody tried to resolve that issue, that problem. So he went and took a survey door to door for months and asked people, well, what would you like in a church? How would you like a church to be? Took that survey, put it all together, and built a church. Became one of the biggest churches in the United States, over 10,000 people. This is in Orange County that this happened. But what he did was he, he, made, he constructed a church and a church model that the people wanted, what they liked, what made them feel good. And, 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 he, and, and the Bible never told us to evangelize people and ask them what they wanted and how they liked it. 
And how, how would you want your church to be? Or how would you like the word presented to you? The Bible never, the, the apostles never taught like that. And we are supposed to build on the foundation of the apostles. And, and uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't brought that way. So what happened was they taught other churches and pastors and people. And now our whole country is pretty much like that. Catering to the people. Giving them the messages they want to hear. And the word holiness has been moved out of the picture. People don't talk about holiness very much anymore. People don't talk about repenting anymore. Repenting meaning you're going to one direction, turn around and go in the other direction. You don't sell books by this message I'm giving you. But what you do get is you get a little bit of heaven. Yeah. And, 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 and you know what? You get a, a relationship increase with God. And you get a closer walk with God. And, and you are complying with what the word says. With this type of a message. It's not the nicest. It's not the most exciting. But you know what? We're getting there. We're getting there. I don't know about you. But I, I, I'm getting there. So, so this message of holiness. Is, is not always what we want to hear. But we're going to tr approach it. Try to be it in a palatable way. In one that tastes good. Okay. <laughs> so. We're, we're in uh, Hebrews 12, 14, right? That's where we're at. Looking. Is that 14? Okay. Hebrews 1, 2. Looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Now, think about that. Looking to Jesus, the author. When you... When you think of the author, he's the one who wrote the book, right? Of your faith. He wrote the book of your faith. He, wrote, he, he knows your book, right? One day God showed me this, that, that the, uh, my life, this was a long time ago, so I have to use how he showed it to me. My life is a, like a VCR tape. I know we don't use them anymore, but that's when he told me it. My life is like a VCR tape, and I can put it in there, in that machine, and the whole movie comes on, and that's my life. And, and, it, and that's the way God looks at it. He, he already saw the whole movie before I was born. He already knew how the whole thing was, how, how, how I was going to fall here, how I was going to fall there, how I was going to get up and say, I'm going to do it this time, and all this other stuff. And, and, but at the end, he was in it for the whole movie. He's the author and finisher of my faith. He, he, he knows the whole thing. So it's, it's, a, it's a concept, a biblical concept that we need to hold on to all the time. God is the one who, you know what, I, I'm in this mess. God's got to help me. Amen. God's got to help me. Yeah. How many of you have ever said, say that all together with me, please. God's, God's got to help me. I've been, I've been trying to do all the right things, follow the Lord. He's got to help me. He has to help me. He has to. He's got to help me. You know, I gave all my money to him. I gave all my heart to him. I've given all that I have and all that I am not. Yes, sin, good, bad, whatever. I gave it to him. It's, it's his thing to handle now. That's the whole idea of this, right? That's the whole idea of this. So, next, Hebrews 12, 14. It says, follow peace. With all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. It says, follow peace and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. No man shall see the Lord. No man shall see the Lord. Remember what Jesus said? Verily, verily, I say unto you, unless a man be born again, he shall not, what? See the kingdom of God. Shall not see the kingdom of God. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, unless a man be born again, he shall not, what? See, see the kingdom of God. Can't see it. Can't understand it. That's why when we come to God and we begin to get the word inside of us, and it begins to work in us, we begin to see things differently. We begin to see things in a different way. We begin to understand things in a different way. The, the born again spiritual Christian does not live by carnal rules in life. Our deliverances come different than the carnal Christian. Our help comes different than the carnal Christian. 
we are, if, if we are a spiritual Christian walking in Jesus Christ, our deliverances are coming possibly in a supernatural way. They can come in a supernatural way. That's why, that's why we, don't, we don't walk the same. Yeah, I like what, what Paul says in one scripture. He says, you are acting like mere men. He, tell, he tells the disciples, you're acting like mere men. Like you're just like everybody else. Like you're just a person. You're not just a person. We're a child of the living God. We're children of the living God. Amen. You know, and, and, and we don't live by mathematics. My life is not dictated by the world's mathematics and finances. My life is dictated by God's mathematics and finances. And when we were talking about giving, that's part of it. Amen. That's part of it. So, it, 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 it's different. It's not the same. So, it says, follow peace with all men and holiness. There's that holiness. Without which no man shall see the Lord. The next scripture there is, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Now, it's saying here that we should be holy because He is holy. So, if, if God said you need to be holy, He's got to help me because I'm like way far away from that. You know, I'm not even near that. I can't even be that. I can tell you right now and I can pray right now. We're going to pray at the end and God make me holy and, and, and keep me there, but I cannot guarantee you by the time I get home that I will do something that's not holy. I can't guarantee that. I can't say that for sure, well, I, I feel pretty holy right now, and, I, and God has forgiven me, but I can't guarantee that by, by the time I get home that, that I'll be in that same state. That's why we got to be connected to Him. we got to stay connected to Him. Pharisees will always... Uh, Try to hang things on people. That's how it was. That's why Jesus got mad at them. People always try to hang guilt trips on other people. That's not what I'm talking about. They're always trying to hang guilt trips on people. But but that that isn't what Jesus is. That's not what Jesus is about. For listen to this. What I wrote down. Holiness is not the way to Christ. Christ is the way to holiness. We flip it around. We, we turn it around. I'm going to read it again. Holiness is not the way to Christ. You don't get to Christ by being holy. No. By being good. By keeping the Ten Commandments. Christ is the way to holiness. Christ is the one who takes us to that place. And, and another thing, uh, Oswald Chambers said, wrote this. Holiness is not happiness. It's the chief end of man. In other words, holiness isn't always going to make you happy, but the end of our at the end of our time when we get to heaven, that's when holiness will be complete. We're never going to be perfect, and we're never going to be completely holy until we get to heaven. When we get to heaven, we will be uh, perfectly complete in holiness. But what God is telling us to do is to strive to be holy. To work at be, being holy. That's, a, that's a, a task. This isn't a popular message. Why, aren't you sorry you came today? You can say amen. It's all right. <laughs> Holiness means those things. That's a Greek word right there. It means purification, sanctification, piety, being purified. The, the Holy Spirit comes and shows us what we do wrong. We become purified by all three. The, by the Holy Spirit revealing to us, instructing us, drawing us to Christ. The blood of Jesus forgiving us of our sins. Purifying us, cleansing us. The Father with His Word making us aware of where we're at. All three things working together to bringing us to holiness, to that place that He wants us to be at. You know, I'm going to read you a list, but I'm going to give you a little insight before that. In, in a minute. In this list I'm going to read you, 
what you're going to find is that there's a whole bunch of things to do. But it's really not a lot of things to do. It's all wrapped up in the fruit of the Holy Spirit and loving your neighbor as yourself. God wants the fruit of the Holy Spirit to be in your life, to be in you, to, to have love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and self-control that is in you. The real deal, not a mask, not a fake, not something that you put on just because you came to church and now we're all here together and now we're all santitos. Not like that. It's not like that. It's true. being real. It's being true. It's being real love, real joy, real peace, real patience, real goodness, real kindness, real, you know, self-control. The real thing. So, I'm going to read you a list. And in this list, I wish I could say I wrote this list, but I didn't. Billy Graham wrote this list, so we'll blame it on him. What, what he wrote are characteristics of a person walking towards holiness. That's all we're saying. Go towards holiness. And I can, I can guarantee you that this principle, this is my own principle. Dysfunctional things breed dysfunctional things. If you do one dysfunctional thing, you might, eh, it might affect you a little bit, but you do another one, and another one, and another one, pretty soon, you got a lot of dysfunctional things in your world around you. Dysfunctional means unbiblical things, things that don't fall in the biblical guidelines, things that are not in Proverbs and Psalms. That's why we do Proverbs and Psalms, things that are, don't fall in those guidelines. You can do one, you can do two, two, three, pretty soon it's going to catch up with you in your whole world, your whole life is dysfunctional. And, and, and when it's dysfunctional, the only way to get out of it is do something right. And then do another thing right. Mm -hmm. Keep do, taking steps, baby steps sometimes, and keep doing right things, and right things, and right things. Pretty soon your life gets in line biblically. Sometimes it's baby steps. Sometimes it's huge steps. But as you're doing a right thing, a right thing, a right thing, uh, you're falling in line with the holiness idea. You're falling in line... In, in biblical line with what's going on. These are victories. This removes the stress, a lot of the stress out of your life. It removes the chaos out of your life. It removes, uh, it, it, it even, it, it can even medically heal you. I mean, heal you medically is what I'm trying to say. F mentally, physically. We do work, uh, I do work with guys that have drug issues, really heavy drug issues. <coughs> And, and we have seen and studied brain scans and things like that and how they got holes in their brains because of using drugs. And, and, and the befores and afters, we looked at that and seen that, that as they move away from the drugs, they're getting healed and their brain is getting healed. There was a disconnect in there between their brain and, 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 and their, their thinking and their logic. Well, what I found out, what I have found out is that everything that that science and and uh, science and uh, doctors and researchers finding not only prove what the Bible is, has taught us for for thousands of years. You know, God's word heals. God's word delivers. Yeah. God, God, God's word can reconnect the, the the electrodes in the brain that are disconnected and heal that brain and even take away. Uh, a lot of mental diseases, but it's God's Word that does that. So, Billy Graham said this about holiness. It's having one mind with God. In other words, the same attitude as God. Striving for that. Making a decision to reject sin. Making a decision to reject sin. I just decided another thing. How about I'm not going to, um, I, I'm not going to uh, jump ahead and, and make all these assumptions that all these things are going to happen. Because now I've become a prophet of doom for my own self. And, and psychologists have a name for that. 
It's called self-fulfilling prophecies. Psychologists write and believe and have done studies that if you think that you're going to do something or you're going to something is going to happen to you, more than likely it is going to happen to you. That's psychologists. We have always said the biblical scripture, as a man thinketh, so is he. The way a man thinks, that's how he's going to be. Bible, psychology, uh, you know, we're there. Next, next one. Seek peace. That's a good one. Be of kind temper. Self-control. Self-denial. These are all things that we work on. When I became a Christian, I, started, I, I went one by one on these things. I don't know if anybody's done that, but I went one by one. I did studies on these and prayed on these things. Because everything that I'm reading to you, I did, I did the wrong end of it. I, to an extreme. I, I'm an extreme person. I don't do halfway things. If I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it all the way. If I'm going to mess up, I'm going to mess up better than you've ever seen. But if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it as right as right can be. And, and I'm an extreme person like that. So I was extremely messed up in my thinking and it took the word of God to put it back it put it in the right place it wasn't back because I never had it to be merciful to others to show mercy will try to do good to others fear God will be faithful set affections on the things above some of the problems that some of us have today we have them. You know what? God's not even going to resolve them. I hate to tell you. I know you turned on television and they told you that, that he would. I know you probably can go buy 20 books that say, you know, how to. But I'm telling you that there's, there's some things in life that you just have to go through. There's some mountains you can't climb. And there's some problems that there's no way out. And there's only one way to go through it. And that's with Jesus. And some of us keep doing the same thing over and over and over again because we are not recognizing that we have a Father in Heaven who is like our natural Father. If you read Hebrews chapter 12, you'd have seen that. That wants, that corrects us because we are His children. That we are not illegitimate children. The Bible uses that B word that I'm not going to use. Illegitimate children so that he would leave us aside but he cares for us and he loves us and he corrects us so that we can become holy Amen. so who are you fighting against and we are fighting against this idea that's planted in the bible about holiness and i'm worried about my problem and my this and my that uh maybe maybe we're supposed to depend on god to get through that Maybe we are not recognizing the supernatural God. Now, I'm a businessman. A businessman. Most of my life, one third of my life. And that doctrine fits in my business. I'm retired now. Not retarded. I'm retired. And, <laughs> and so that fits with that. I'm telling you, it fits. Try it out. Try it out. So. Maybe he's not going to, maybe I got to depend on him and listen to him to get through this. Because the solution I was looking for isn't even the solution that was there. It's not even the one that God wanted to, to, to solve the problem. So we're finishing now with this last scripture. Verse 28. It says, wherefore, we receiving a kingdom that cannot be moved. We receiving a kingdom that cannot be moved. That's that that's a big deal. Do you want to receive a kingdom, the kingdom of God, that is immovable, unchangeable, a God that will not change? You know, he's the Bible says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's not changing. It's the same God. He, he's not going to change. The Bible also says the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. He calls you. He called you to holiness. Without repentance means he's not going to take back the offer. He's not going to take back the calling. So he calls you to holiness. Doesn't matter what you've done or haven't done. He's still calling. He's calling today. 
When you wake up in the morning, He's still calling us. Holy Spirit still calling us to holiness, to, to come to that place. Now, my definition of holiness and how to get there is to go into His presence. Pastor Jose last week used the, the scripture, Isaiah chapter 6, mm -hmm. where, where um, the Levitical priests are, are in the presence of God in the temple of God, and, and God's train filled the temple in the, in, in the, some people call it the Chicano glory, but it's really the Shekinah <laughs> glory, and, 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 and it filled the temple. Yes. And, and we see in other scriptures that they could not stand for the presence of God in that temple. I've been in that place with God. Where I prayed and, and I've been in His presence and I get up and I fall down and I get up and I fall down. And I look like, a, like a, I used to over there when I was doing things I wasn't supposed to be doing. And, and it's the presence of God that, that lightens your load and, and removes even gravity from you it feels like. And, and, and takes those burdens. And as you are in His Word, He's washing you with the water of the Word and regenerating you, making you holy and presentable in the sight of your Lord. That's what we're talking about. That's all there. That's all there. Mm -hmm. So it says, Wherefore we receive a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Reverence, once again, we see. Verse 29. For our God is a consuming fire. We finish right there. Our God is a consuming fire. He is a consuming fire. Uh, if you remember <coughs> that, uh, that Jesus came to baptize with fire. He, in the Holy Spirit. And that consuming fire comes in us. And it burns, it burns all those things that you might have been saying while I was talking. Well, I can't do that. I don't know if I want to do that. Maybe I could do it someday, but not today. Maybe I could be that. Or, or your yeah buts, yeah but this, yeah but that. You got too many buts. Yeah but. But that consuming fire will burn that mm -hmm. out of you. And how do you get to that fire? You gotta get to that fire. Come to Jesus. Amen. When in the morning, Amen. in the morning, the Bible says if you seek Him early, you will find Him. Mm. This is a spiritual thing. This isn't something you find in a book or you can watch a movie. And if you think, and if, if we really think that we're getting all our spirituality from 30 minutes or 40 minutes or whatever from a preaching message, and that's my whole, that's my whole get down, that's my whole uh, religion, you're very, you're fooling yourself. You've been fooled by the devil. That's right. You have to go into God's presence. You want to get healed inside? You go in God's presence. You want to take shortcuts and go this way and that way? Well, maybe 20 years you'll get healed. But I don't know about you, but from the get, from the first day, I wanted all God that, all that God had for me. I wanted everything. I felt cheated. I felt robbed. And I wanted everything that God had for me. And I went on a journey trying to get it. Do you want to get it? Or do you want to just stay as you are? That's that's the question. Holiness. Holiness. It's a bad word for some people. People don't want to say it. Some people don't want to talk about it. Watch Christian television and see how long you have to go before you hear that word. It's going to be a little while on certain channels. Uh, worship team, come forward. <laughs> Mm-hmm.